WSJ.com. Venezuela's food chain is breaking and millions go hungry. A report found 13% of children under five are stunted. Oil rich nation is on the edge of an irreversible catastrophe. Ana Nunez, a 62-year-old retired municipal worker in Western Venezuela, says her meals often consist of just a few corn flour pancakes known as arepas. Even when she has money to buy groceries in the city of Maracaibo's teeming flea market, she said that instead of quality food, they sell garbage like animal hides and rotten cheese. Now, you know, a lot of these mainstream media stories begin with a kind of sensationalist cherry picking of a story. But to see this failure on the larger scale, there is an undeniable failure here. And early on in the coronavirus pandemic here in the United States, we brought you stories of uh, hundreds of tons, thousands of tons of produce rotting on the side of the road because the supply chains were failing. Truckers weren't going out, stores weren't open. And here in the good old US of A, citizens of the empire, we will be protected from starving. They're, they're just, they're not going to let that happen. We're going to have food lines. We're going to have uh, food pantries uh, overburdened. We're going to have uh, tapping of uh, of stores and, and, and emergency supplies. But I, I don't think the powers that be would let a population as armed as ours starve. But in Venezuela, not only do we see the consequences of a different vicious kind of socialism, but we see the fragility of it in a crisis like this. And while I will make the case until we admit it as a country that America is a fundamentally socialist nation as well, I'm certainly happy to admit that Venezuela's socialism is of a much more destructive scale and nature in the nationalization of industry. A widespread scarcity of gasoline is the latest blow to domestic food production in Venezuela, preventing goods from getting to market and farmers from filling up their tractors. Food production in this oil-rich nation, led by its socialist president, Nicolas Maduro, has already been hobbled by shortages of seeds and agrochemicals, price controls that made raising crops unprofitable and government seizures of farms and food processing plants. So they were... Uh, a few more down, a few more miles down the road to serfdom towards socialism than the United States when this crisis hit, and we're a lot more vulnerable. However, we can learn from this because we see how this serves to understand how, in the United States, we have been vulnerable to the shutdowns and lockdowns and all the ways that we have been pushed to certain breaking points. Venezuelans aren't the only ones going hungry across Latin America. The economic blow caused by the COVID-19 pandemic has thrown millions out of work and into poverty. From Mexico City to Santiago, people are skipping meals, lining up at soup kitchens and begging, United Nations agencies say. But conditions in Venezuela, which even before the pandemic was suffering the worst economic meltdown in its history, are by far the most dire. So, uh, Skipping ahead, uh, even when supermarket shelves are stocked, hyperinflation, they hit 90, excuse me, it's a big number to say, 9,500% last year, and high unemployment mean that millions of Venezuelan families can't afford enough to eat. So yeah, the, remember, this was a country that was already in the middle of a currency crisis. And again, I, I, I hate to make this like a Merocentric while we're looking around the rest of the world and seeing like how worse people are suffering here. Uh, than, than here, but like, let's learn from this. See, like, what what led them to this currency crisis? Oh, it's it's what the American federal government is doing now. And we've seen a lot more dollar collapse stories lately. And and I'm start I'm 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 starting to see the the, the substance in them that that was lacking in in prior decades, perhaps. 
So if it gets to that point in the United States, is the American federal government going to be able to bail out the Federal Reserve System with its muscle again? I don't know. The UN report said that the monthly minimum wage of just a few dollars buys less than 5% of required basic foodstuffs for the average family. We've been, uh, as Carlos Alonzo, 35-year-old farm worker, says that we've been saved by the avocados and bananas growing near our house. Now, that is, that is encouraging, isn't it? I mean, to end this story on a positive note, as we see in the United States, more and more people inclined to live off grid to produce your own food. It's not that hard. Get that independence, put in that effort. And if this happens again, it's not gonna happen. Uh, but there's there's one more uh, quote I, I gotta share here from the end of the story, uh, one, a couple more paragraphs. Others rely on remittances from relatives living abroad for these cash transfers have been cut in half amid COVID-19 quarantines and economic shutdowns, said Susan Rafali, uh, food security consultant in Venezuela. She said, Mr. Maduro is reluctant to acknowledge the scope of the crisis or to allow the World Food Program or and other international aid groups to distribute the massive quantities of food Venezuela needs. As she said, this is not yet a famine, but we are in a food emergency. The food supply system has totally broken down. So please keep the people who are suffering in ways that in the United States as protected citizens of the empire we can't even imagine yet in your uh, in your thoughts and your prayers and remember that uh, we need to stay grateful for how good we have it if we can still afford to eat.